Hey guys. So as some of you may know, I have been on the search for, you know, kind of finding a solution to my struggle with puzzling on the floor. And to be quite honest, it hasn't been getting any easier getting up from the floor. And this has been an ongoing search for me. And I've looked through tons of different tables and some of you guys have even sent me suggestions. And there just so happened to be one table that I did find online that I thought would probably work out. And it just so happened a few days ago, the company that sells that product reached out to me and asked me if I'd be interested in trying out some of their products. So you know, I was like, yeah, of course, send me whatever you want. And one of the things that they sent me just so happened to be the table that I had been eyeing for the longest. And on top of that, they're going to send me another form of puzzle mat or, or something to the effect. It's a hard surface, but this one holds up to like 2,000 count puzzles, which is super exciting. And I, I wish I got it before I started this 2,000 count puzzle that I've been working on because you all know by now that, you know, the surface that I was using, that, that other puzzle mat was, you know kind of making the whole situation a little bit more challenging for me. But anyways, yesterday I did receive the, what I am assuming is the large table, the one that, you know, I had been eyeing for the longest. And I'm really looking forward to checking it out. But anyways, I, I just got back from work right now. I was just lounging on my on my couch for a little bit and I figured, you know what? Why don't I pull the camera, let's open this box, and let's go through this together. Because, I mean, I, I'm super excited about this. This is, this is good promising stuff for my back and my legs. So anyways, let's move on with it. So when your table arrives, it comes in one shipping box and packed in that ever so annoying styrofoam that gets everywhere. But anyways, the table itself is wrapped in plastic and already fully assembled. All you gotta do is pull those legs open and make sure those brackets snap in tightly so that it doesn't close up on you whilst you're working on it. And really, the only thing you have to do here is cut off the loops they have to help you pull out the trays, push down on these little latches here that secures the tray in, and install the knobs, which come with screws that'll be in a little plastic bag that you'll find in one of the sorting drawers. All you have to do is stick one screw through one side and screw them up to the end and you can just hand tighten these you don't have to get a screwdriver or anything and that's pretty much it your table's ready pretty darn easy if you ask me but wow i must say these sorting trays are pretty darn big and i love how they just slide into the table now you can adjust this table to three different angles all you have to do is turn the little latches that secure the board in place lift the top by the ribbon loop and move the wooden panel underneath to whichever level you want it at Again, pretty straightforward. This really is a good looking table. And again, I love how these sorting trays are so big. They basically are the size of the table once you set them all together. But anyways, the true test here is going to be what is this like whilst actually puzzling? Now, before I started using this table for a puzzle session, I decided to do a quick check on this non-slip surface just to see what I would be getting myself into does have that fibrous feel to it like the Sunix mat but not as bad really I could still move these pieces around and it's not snagging as much you still kind of hear it too like the Sunix mat but if your puzzle is not a crumbly one it should survive but yeah this is adjusted to the highest and these puzzle sections are going nowhere then I also quickly checked out the protective cover that it comes with and it's nothing special, it's just a big piece of plastic that you can latch on the table if you want when you're done puzzling for the day. But anyways, the dimensions on this table is 24.5 by 32.7 inches. So it's pretty much an inch shorter on each side compared to my everyday table. Not a huge difference, but something to be mindful of when I'm picking which table to work with. But anyways, let's move on to the true test. How am I going to feel sitting on an actual chair whilst puzzling? I'm pretty sure muscle cramps won't be involved. So for this test, I decided to work on my first Spin Masters puzzle, which will be a video that'll be coming out very soon if it hasn't already. I have no idea when anything is releasing at this point, but anyways. Once the sorting was done, I adjusted the top to its lowest angle, which felt the most comfortable to me in my seating position, and started beasting my way through it. 
On a very off-topic note, I did start this 1,000-piece puzzle right after finishing my first 2,000-piece. And my goodness, did this puzzle look and feel so itty-bitty to me. I mean, of course it would. That 2,000 count was monstrous, but I just thought it was funny how small and so unintimidating this 1K count looked after completing the frame. Yeah, I know, it has nothing to do with the table review, but looking back at this footage now, it just reminded me of it, and I thought I'd mention it. But anyways, I didn't have to fully complete this puzzle in order to pretty much list out all my thoughts about this puzzle table from Vever. Now, of course, the number one thing to me about this table was the fact that I can actually sit on a chair. I'm not having to sit on the floor, which is a big deal for my back and my legs. This was definitely a more comfortable way to puzzle. And what makes it even better is that I can store this away very easily. And it really doesn't take up a lot of space. I could store this behind my couch. You'd probably want to store it under your couch, but mine has legs in the middle, so I couldn't really do that. But again, it's super simple. You just fold up the legs. And what's great as well about this table is that it does have a handle on one side so that you can easily pick it up. What's also great is that you can adjust it to whichever angle you're comfortable with. And the non-slip surface isn't that bad. It does have a little bit of that fibrous feel to it, and it does tend to snag on the back of the puzzle piece, but it wasn't as bad, or I guess I can say as fibrous as my other puzzle map that I've used. And another one of my favorite things are the sorting trays. I love the fact that they're like little drawers in this table, and they're big. You can lay out all your pieces very nicely. The color is neutral, so you know, the pieces themselves, the details and colors and everything stand out really nicely. And again, as I mentioned earlier, there's no major assembly to this. It's all good to go. All you have to do is put the little knobs in the drawers and, and that's it, you're ready to start puzzling. So overall, it, it was great in all those aspects. Now, it's funny, I'm trying to figure out how to say this, but with all the pros that I've listed, there are cons that are related to those pros, if, if that makes any sense. So for example, let's, let's start with the surface of this puzzle table. As I said, it's non-slip. I do love that it's non-slip. And yes, it does have the fibrous texture, but I didn't see that too much as a con. What I did kind of find a con to me with this puzzle surface was the color. And really, I shouldn't even list that as a con. That's more like a personal preference, but yeah, that's just me. I guess I'm just so used to the neutral tone on my first puzzle table that, you know, this this was a little bit of a shock to my eyes. It makes me think of a pool table, which isn't necessarily a horrible thing either. I, I like pool, but I mean, I guess for me, it's just, it kind of takes away from the colors of your puzzle pieces. But again, I'll say it again, that's my personal preference. But anyways, I just felt like I had to mention that. Especially if you're someone who's, you know, very particular about the surface that you work on in terms of the, the background. Now, as I said previously, in terms of a pro, the fact that this can store away pretty easily is fantastic. But there were some negatives to that as well. And one of them being the fact that Yes, it is easy to fold the legs in, but you kind of have to be a little bit more on the gentle side with it. For some reason, one side of my legs kind of had some damage to it. And the, I guess you call it the support between the two legs kind of detached itself. Now, I don't know if this was a me issue. I don't know if I was being a beast with it or something, but I do notice that the table itself is made out of pine and it says so on the instruction manual. And pine tends to be on the softer side. So my guess is probably the nails or the staples they used didn't really hold on very well. But I, with some help, I was able to get some glue and clamp it down and, you know, kind of get it a little bit more sturdy. Overall, I kind of feel like the top of this table is the most solid of the entire thing. The legs are, I feel like, are a little bit on the weak side. So yeah, just be aware of that when you're opening and closing the legs up. And another thing in regards to being able to store it, one thing about this puzzle table is that it's pretty darn heavy. At least to me, I'm a small person and for me this was kind of heavy and did feel a bit clunky at times trying to, you know, set it up. 
And thankfully it does have that handle because if it didn't, I mean, I, I don't know, I'd probably look like a mess trying to put it together. And another thing I figured I would know, you know, that might be a con to some of you is that you cannot change the height of the table. These legs are set, they're just solid wood panels. So there's no way really you can adjust the level of the tabletop if let's say you wanna use a different kind of chair or, you know, sit on the couch or something like that. Now the real question here, you know, now that I've actually experienced using this puzzle table, if, if the company had never sent this to me, would I have been happy if I had actually spent the money on it? And I don't remember the price exactly off the top of my head. I'm gonna put the price of it somewhere here on the screen. And as I said before, I almost bought this table. But am I glad that I didn't? And I just so happened to have the luck of having it sent to me. And quite honestly, you know, even with the cons and some of the, you know, the weak areas of the legs, you know, for the price, I don't, I don't think I would have been mad because really at the end of the day, it did serve as number one, well, it served two main purposes here. And these were two big factors for me. I'm able to sit on a chair and puzzle and I can store this away. I'm still able to adjust the angle that I can work at. The puzzle is not slipping off the surface. And to me, what's a nice bonus is that it comes with the puzzle tray drawers, which I think is a, you know, a really cool add on. But you know, I, I have to mention this. I have to throw this out there. If I was creating a puzzle table, like I was thinking as I was using this, like what would be the perfect, perfect thing for me? It would be basically this whole concept, but I would want a surface that is just like my current puzzle table in terms of the color and the type of non-slip surface it has. Honestly, I wish I could take my current table and put longer legs on it. It's not possible, but I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm a creature of habit. I love my table and I don't know. But again, that's just me. But if you want to read up more on this puzzle table and if you think it might be one that'll work out for you, I'm going to leave a link down below so that you can check it out. But anyways, guys, enough about this table. Let's go move on to that puzzle board. Okay, so this also comes in a very big box, packed very well with that ever so annoying styrofoam. But like the first table, there really is no assembly to this either, aside from just screwing the knobs into the sorting drawer. And this board does have more sorting trays than the first one. It also does come with a lazy Susan so that you can spin your board around to get around it easier. Oh, and it also does come with these little sticky gummy things that you're supposed to put on it so that it has a better grip on the board itself. And again, like the other table, it does come with the plastic protective cover to keep those pesty cats away. But anyways, of course, the real test comes when we have to actually puzzle on it. So for this one, I decided to work on the Lawrence Keen World of Dracula puzzle. And reason being was because since this was a vertical puzzle, it wasn't going to fit properly on my original table. That one you could really only work on it horizontally. So I figured with the Lazy Susan, I can kind of prop this on the table, which I can tilt the angle on and, you know, hope that it works out that way. And again, it didn't take me long to kind of gather my thoughts and figure out what I thought about this board. All right, so let's go over the good stuff. And one of them is the size. It's so big, I know I won't have to use my puzzle mat anymore, or I don't even have to use a cheap foam board anymore because this is gonna work for me. And it's a solid workspace. And because it's big, it does come with the Lazy Susan, which lets you maneuver the board so that you can work on hard to reach areas quite easily. And I think aside from the fact that this table's big, I absolutely love the sorting trays that it comes with. Again, I don't know what it is. I just love the whole drawer concept. I know it's nothing new or anything, but the fact that I have these now, I mean, it's fantastic. And this board comes with six trays and they're big. I love that I can lay out all my pieces almost just to one single layer and I could see everything very nice and clear because of the neutral tone of the wood. And for me, I actually like the surface of this board. It doesn't have any non-slip surface or anything. It's just a plain wood panel surface. So, you know, you can glide your sections and pieces across it very, very easily. There's no snagging. There's none of that stuff going on. And I do love how, you know, this is a fairly thin board. 
I would say it's about maybe two inches thick. I don't remember. I'm going to put the dimensions here, but you can slide this very easily under your couch or behind it or to the side. You could very easily hide this somewhere. Now, aside from that, there's not much else to this board, but like the puzzle table, you know, those pros do come along with some disadvantages. And I know I started off with talking about the size of the board. Yes, the size is super fantastic, but because it is so big, again, I'm a small person. So it did feel a bit clunky and cumbersome trying to, you know, set it up. And it's, it's pretty darn heavy. I kind of wish it did come with a handle or two on it just so that you can kind of, you know, slide it in and out of storage easily and kind of lift it onto your surface. But I mean, yeah, that's something you should be aware of. And this board is obviously not meant to be tilted. There's no tilt adjuster to it. It's on a Lazy Susan, it's a huge board. So because of that, I did struggle a bit because I, I prefer to puzzle with my surface angled up a bit. It just kind of helps my back. And when I tried to make that happen, it was no good. It was sliding off my table, but obviously is, is not meant to be that way. But you know, I had to try. And again, that's, that's why you have the Lazy Susan, so that you can maneuver the puzzle around so that you can get to those areas. Really to use this board to the, how do you say, best of its capabilities, use it to the max, you really need to make sure that you're using it in a, you know, quite an open space. Because if you're gonna spin this board around, you know, this, this is big. It's gonna start knocking into shelves and, you know, anything that's around it. Because of course, it's, it's a huge puzzle board. It's for 2000 count puzzles. You need a wider area to work in anyways. It's something to think about, especially if you wanna work with it with the sorting drawers open. And this was actually an issue I had because, you know, my puzzle room isn't the biggest space in the world. I have a lot of stuff around me. And there was even a point in the middle of puzzling where I just ended up taking off the Lazy Susan because I didn't need it. I couldn't really spin the board where I was sat. So again, you know, this is something you'll have to think about before, you know, you start puzzling on it. Make sure it's in an area where you know you can, you know, maneuver it freely if you're going to maneuver it. You don't have to put the Lazy Susan on it. You could just leave it just flat on the surface. Really, I don't think this board was meant to be used the way I was trying to use it, which wasn't really the greatest idea in the world. But, you know, I guess, you know, I have to film. My setup is very particular. So, you know, it, it's definitely going to work for me when I have to do my 2000 count puzzles because it, it kind of has to. But I'm pretty sure that for an everyday puzzler, this would be a great addition. Honestly, both of these tables would be a great addition to your puzzle space. Now, again, if the company didn't send this to me, would I have regretted buying it with my own money? And I honestly can't think off the top of my head how much it was. It, I, it had to be under, under 100 bucks, maybe even 75. But with that in mind, I mean, in regards to the overall quality of the product and the fact that it can hold puzzles up to 2,000 counts, it has sorting drawers. It does have the protective cover that you can put on top of it. I don't know. I kind of feel like I wouldn't have regretted it. Though I don't know if it's something that I, I would have just bought. If that makes any sense. I don't know if I'm making sense now. Do, do you know what I mean? Obviously, this is something that I probably would have splurged for myself. It's not really something that I absolutely necessarily need because I don't often do 2000 count puzzles. I mean, Quite frankly, I've only done one 1500 and one 2000 count pu puzzle in over a year since I started the channel. So, you know, I am happy that I do have it now because now I could just pull it out whenever I need it. But between the two, I think my favorite is the, the puzzle table with, with the tall legs. Because again, I could sit on a chair and I love that. Again, I feel like the board is like a little special treat for myself. It's not extremely less necessary. Unless you are somebody who, who does 1,500, 2,000 count puzzles all the time and you need a usable work surface to puzzle on, I mean, this would be fantastic for you. But let's be honest, no product out there is perfect. I've yet to find the perfect product. If you know of any perfect ones, let me know down below so that I can check them out. But anyways, in the end of the day, you really need to figure out what features are most important to you 
and really you know what would work best for you because everyone's different you know these aren't going to work for everybody they may work for some and for others it might be a, a total nonsense nightmare but if any of you have any of these items or anything similar to them let me know down below what item it is and what have you what has your experience been like Recently, I've kind of been, you know, on the lookout for different puzzle accessories and, and whatnot. So I'd be curious if there's anything out there that I'm missing out on. But if any of you are interested in looking more into these products and, you know, if you think they might work out for you, I'm going to leave a link down below. Well, two links actually for each of these items so that you could check them out. Anyways, guys, I really need to get a move on with, with these two puzzles that I still have sat incomplete on these surfaces. And now that I think about it, this is interesting. I've never actually worked on two puzzles at the same time. So yeah, this is probably gonna take me a little longer than I expected. But anyways, enough of that. I'm gonna get back to work on these. I hope you are all doing well. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.